Welcome back guys, we're episode 11. Today we've got Reyes, Safe, the Professor, Amr, and I'm back. And today we're talking about high versus low. And obviously low is better, but we'll come to that. Uh, <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> why? 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 Tell me why. Defend yourself. Because it turns your automatic car into a manual car. Huh? Huh? What? <laughs> we'll come to it. We'll come to it. We'll come to it. We'll come to it. <laughs> what? First, we're starting with the theoretical. Why does a car have four high and four low? Does anyone want to start? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the professor will. So, four high versus four low. Um, <coughs> mainly for off-roaders. Surprisingly, there are some sedans that have it, if you guys are familiar with some of the old Audis. But let's stick to, to off-roaders. So, you have um, an obstacle to climb, or a hill, or a, a heavy load to move. These are mainly the reasons why you would use it. Um, your transmission and uh, differential ratios are too high for the power that you're making. If you're in a manual, you're putting too much load on the clutch. If you're in automatic, you're going to overheat your transmission by the time you get moving or you get to where you're going. You switch to four low. You effectively um, reduce the output speed of the wheel while multiplicating the torque. So you get more torque, less wheel speed. Um, most cars have one preset high and one preset low ratio. For Jeeps, it's 2.72 to 1. So you have a 2.72 reduction of 2.72 if you're driving a Sahara or a Sport. Yes. yes. Yeah. Rubicon it's a 4.1. 4. 1. 1 uh... um, but you also multiply the torque by that same number. So you are going up a very steep hill. We're not talking rock crawling yet. If you're going up a very steep hill, and first gear, you're revving to 3,000 RPM just to do 10 kilometers per hour. You can switch to four low, go into second or into third at a lower RPM while not overheating your transmission or adding a lot of load and keeping the revs high and overheating, etc. Um, if you are trying to pull a heavy load up a hill, this will help you as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then we go to what we're using for mainly as rock crawling, where you need a controlled speed and torque to move you through the obstacle without you having to be heavy on the throttle so that you have a smoother climb over the rocks. You don't need to jump between gas and brake all the time. You have 2.7 times, for example, in, in, in a non-Ruby or in a Rubicon 4.1 times the torque without even touching the gas pedal in first gear. So that is the theory. What about what about in the FJ? What about in the Nissan Patrol? Uh, well, most companies have their own ratios, but all in all, um, the idea is the same. Yeah, most of them are around the same ballpark. What about the power you distribution when you turn between high and low? So, in some cases, it differs, but in general, four low is only used with four wheel drive. Four low. No, with I wasn't drive. meaning about that, but I mean in four low, you have a 50 50 distribution of power between front and rear. That, again, that's, that's also dependent. Mm. So, th the first uh, like uh, condition is. Four low and two wheel drive, you're just going to spin tires. You have mm. too much torque and not enough grip to contain it. And when you switch to four low, in most systems, you end up locking the transfer case. So you have an equal 50 50 weight, uh, sorry, <coughs> torque distribution between the front axle and the rear axle. Some uh, transfer cases have, like a Haldex system, for example, and some hydraulic units, you have a, a torque biasing system. So it depends on how much grip you have per axle, etc. But in general, yes, that, that, that's a very important point is you end up locking the axle and you have an equal 50-50 torque split between front and rear. Mm -hmm. And on high, you have a lot. I know about Jeeps, it's around 70-30 between low, between it's rear and, and front. It's no, but I mean, generally, the distribution of power is 30, 30 uh, sorry, 30 front, 70 rear. In in the quadro drive system that's available on the Grand Cherokees, the WJ and the WK1 and 2, etc., you actually have a clutch pack with a hydraulic pump. And mm -hmm. according to different... Uh, Hello, that's an adaptive speeds. system. No, but, but it's fully mechanical. Yeah, but it's an adaptive system mostly, right? It, it's permanent four wheel high. Yeah. And it will just give you enough torque, more torque, as much as needed, to the axle that needs it. Yeah. Right? So you could actually end up with 100% forward sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you can have 50 50 or whatever. And Audi <coughs> or Volkswagen with their four motion systems. Yeah, but when you're driving they, they, a Jeep you, and you're driving especially a Wrangler, which is a proper off roader, so you need to know. Mm -hmm what's happening exactly with the power distribution in order to determine that. With the JL, These other SUVs, which are basically big cars that has the option of driving 4x4. This is how I look at it, so, yeah. Uh, look, 
some of the bigger SUVs, they don't have four high as, as the standard option that we have in Jeeps. They have an automatic system. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, Which is now on the JL. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which is what they got from the quarter drive system. And the JL yeah. has the front axle disconnect to add to that. Mm -hmm. But uh, in general, four high, you're not always in four high. You're That's when you're on the auto system. Exactly. Yeah. Which was known as, uh, yeah, was just standard four high. And on the older cars, it was four high, four high part time, mm. which means you are locked in four high. Yep. On the standard ratio that you have out of a normal two high system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so basically the theory. So let's let's move to use cases for our region, and what we're talking about. Off road. Oh, and our region uses so, both basically. Yeah. There 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 are, there, are, there are times when you you. You're, you depends have what to kind use of one drive you are. You, you, it depends what kind of drive you're in the desert. Whether it's you doing a very high dunes, uh, uh, fast pace, uh, a lot of switching between dunes, medium sized dunes, steep descents, steepness, uh, rocky areas. Uh, so, so you're in for the whole. So when system. so when do you use high? When you use high, when you're just base, when you want speed. When you're going for medium, normal sized dunes. When you're a competitive driver. <laughs> <laughs> no, basically in normal situations, you would use the high. In yes. a normal driving situation, in a normal day driving, uh, I'm not going uh, uh, Liwa high dune extreme. Um, you're always well, use Where your high. standard torque is enough exactly. in the three no, years. But even on Liwa high dune extreme, you do need uh, speed on your side. Where in Fort Law, you're limited. So yeah, but you, uh, yeah, when you say limited, you're still limited to what? Eighty, which is more than enough. Really? For the depends, big dunes? Uh, of course. Uh, Again, it depends on your driving style. Okay. But I would obviously say that driving so let's say in situations where you see is uh, a bit risky. Where, where, where you see Liwa, where they go like ten kilometers away just to fly on the to fly on the dune, so they can reach to the top. Do you think that the low would give you that no, of course high speed. Not. No, of course not. It doesn't give you the high speed, as we said. It stops. Yeah. Well, not stops, but your, so your revs are so high that you're not going to go anywhere. You're mechanically limited to that speed. You're, li you're limited. Okay, right? coming back to your point where we all said, what? Yes. <laughs> what were you saying? Right, so, so you have to understand my use case. Uh -huh. I don't have my ring and pinion changed. Uh -huh. so, already, so you're forced to use it. No, I'm yeah, not forced. He, he has I'm to. not forced. I'm not forced. I can drive in high, no problem. Yeah, but it will be the, sluggish. The difference is, the difference is, with uh, and and this is how I explain it when people ask, "What do you drive in?" I say, "I drive in low." And they say, "Why?" Uh, is because for my setup, if I drive in high, I need to always plan my full route perfectly. Mm -hmm. I need to plan that. Okay, there's a very steep climb. I need to build my momentum early. So like hold the map and check where the <laughs> exactly, 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 exactly. Okay. Whereas when I go to ma when I go to low, that figure is the skyjacker lived with you six years. It gives years. it gives me that ability <laughs> to ignore you. <laughs> it gives me that it gives me that ability to to react, especially if I'm not leading. If I'm leading, I can plan, no problem. Mm -hmm. So if I'm following someone, I don't know whether they're going to turn left, going to turn right, going to uh, suddenly break and goes down a steep drop. I don't mm -hmm. know. So with with low gear, I have that ability to react. Mm -hmm. I have that added torque if I drop down one gear the difference is is, is That's, yeah large. because you're on 35 inch right 35 inch yeah, yeah. With, so a rear gear would, would but wouldn't be driving honest, solve on low issue. for a long period uh, like on, on, on regular basis wouldn't that affect big time mm. on what affect what it would, so you are multiplying the torque as a exactly as a, I think yeah. you're kidding by the but you're putting less factor. stress on the engine and yeah. most of the stress is going to the transfer gate so the engine, yes, has to output. You you, you put less strain on. The, you ask less of the engine yeah. because you're multiplying whatever it was giving you yeah. to the wheels. But at the same time, you're revving higher. All your pressures and temperatures are higher. Yeah. That's a. Mm, well, you could. So yeah, you are revving higher, but you're um, you're revving to your peak torque. True. Whereas in high gear, you might not be. So your 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 efficiency of your rev is you're getting more. Uh, you're getting your peak torque from the engine. You're getting peak performance from your it's engine. It's actually the extra revving actually is more power going in onto your wheels. Yeah. Correct. As far as this, as far as using the power that your engine makes, yes, you are more, more, more most of the time in the peak uh, part of, of your torque curve. But most of the time you're revving a little too high. So if you are... Uh, if you're high, driving on... Yeah, for example, if it's automatic, you're driving on third and fourth gear, it's not really... 
I mean, it's equivalent to driving on high driving gear on first and second, second gear. Exactly. So, but but if if let's say you max out first and for high, and then you shift to second, you can drop considerable RPMs and, yes. let, and let the engine cool down for the next small stretch. But in four low, you're always going to be at three most of the time. Like, uh, no, no. no I don't know much no. about the, the the deep deep inside uh, intestine technicalities of what he's talking about, the but the guts itself basically. But when I'm driving four low. I can feel that I'm putting so much, so much pressure on the car. You are on the ring. You're putting so much pressure. You can feel driving on lower hole. What ring and pinion do you have? Stock. The last time I used the low, I was on stock. Yes. Okay. Now on stock, it shouldn't be much. And you would feel it worse if you have, let's say, a four, five, six. Yeah, big time. Because you're you're killing. Basically, you don't have any range within your RPM. Mm. It's like the moment you're throttling, it's it's max. Mm-hmm. Look, so <laughs> that's why it's better to drive on high. But I'll if you're on 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 sorry, if you're still on the stock 3.73, I mean, the the, the low range has quite and plus it's only 2.7 on the transfer case, so you have a lot of range to go around with. You I would agree range. with you in case of Ala Rubicon still within that range, but if you're going higher than that, if you're going on to let's say starting four five six spring and pinion and up. And it would be worse if you have a Rubicon, because it's the 4.1. Oh, so yes, yeah, yeah, I mean, I've known people literally the moment he puts his foot on the throttle, it, it maxes out the yeah, RPM yeah. immediately. He doesn't have third gears first. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, but on a on a on a stock Sahara so, so or Sport, it's it's convenient. It's fine. Exactly. And so we're still but talking not about for driving still, it the whole time. So so we're still talking about <laughs> we're still talking about sand. We haven't come onto rocks. Yeah. Um, the the point <laughs> to come back to is. We're, we're putting more pressure on a transfer case <clears> than you do in high, but you're putting less pressure on your engine. Your engine so I have two questions, or less which is more expensive to replace? Um, first off, you're forgetting a few other things. Depends where you're getting your engine from. <laughs> no, but still, I mean, a used engine still would be more expensive than yeah, a transfer of course. case. Plus, plus I, in my long time off-roading, I haven't really heard of any transfer cases, like in comparison to engines going, I'd say the ratio is much lower. Really? You want to hear my story with the transfer case? <laughs> You're unique, man. You want to look at my, t- I mean, my own transfer case? There, 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 there is a the case pieces. every every howl. I mean, it's for in example, pieces now. if I mean if on a JK, for example, the the the, the transmission is one of the like the strongest uh, transmissions you can see out there in the market, and it's extremely rare to find a case where someone damages it. The transfer case, you mean? The transmission itself. Oh, okay. But it happens. I mean, so there is always a case where. It's, it's well. so I have a question. Um, is there a difference between the four low and the JL and the JK? Um, like I, I've honestly never only, tried the. Yeah, I have a different different transmission. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, like I mean, no. I mean, you know how I was speaking about how how much pressure you're putting on the same on the car when you're jumping forward. Is it the same thing? I've never tried it on the JL. That's why I'm asking. No, but I mean, the, the ZF1 actually because of the eight gears, it gives you a little bit of more. That, that's what that's, that's what I kind of play thought. around with. Yeah. That's you what I thought. You can stay of. in the curve longer, yes. especially with the yeah, guitar. The only the thing I don't like is that the gears are so close together. Yeah, you yeah. just keep shifting yeah. the whole thing. You know, it's 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 an eight speed designed for road use. It's not I designed know, for off like road. Like so if you're in third or fourth gear, it doesn't really make much difference. Yeah. It's they're very similar. Look, I'm not a fan one, of the ZF anyway. There's one thing you need to remember: get in your cars, put it in four low, and notice how the car like. Normally in four high, if you have your foot on the brake, you put the car in drive, it won't it roll won't, away. Or four low, it'll feel like it'll it's gonna jump. jump. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're adding strain on the drive shafts mm-hmm. because you're literally multiplying the torque by a minimum of two point seven times. That's yeah, why when I park, but, I keep but it the amount of power that is getting immediately to the drive shaft is transferred 50-50, so it's not fully on one of the no, drive shafts. It is per shaft. You're sending you're sending the, the source of the power is the engine. Yes. So that hasn't changed. So you're adding more strain on everything from the engine mounts, mainly because that's when you start snapping them. Mm-hmm. The transmission mount and the transfer case mount is one. Uh, your shafts, your cross joints, your ring and pinion, uh, your carrier, big time, the bearings. It's what it's built for. You're, you're, you're just, you're literally, imagine you just took your engine out and put a supercharged one in. Maybe even a bit more, actually a lot more. Mm-hmm. So, so you're saying, so you're saying that low gear is like having a supercharger? <laughs> Because that's exactly what I said. You know what they call the ring and pinion drag <laughs> racing? The poor man's supercharger. Yep. That's what they call it. It's the same effect on a two wheel drive car, basically. Heard that? Did you hear that? So I drive a supercharged Jeep. You guys don't. 
Do you, do you remember the sentence you said? <laughs> poor man's... Yeah, I'm poor. More people need to watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you, you do add you do add strain. In the, in the sand, you add more strain than you would on rock because you're mainly faster. But, but I honestly don't think it's it's noticeable. If you if you do it if if you drive with well you understand what you're doing and you're not just sitting there bashing it the whole time you're fine you're fine there will be a bit more wear a bit more heat but it's it's not that bad if you if you know what you're doing and you're not driving it like crazy so let's move on to rocks then yeah what's a use case for high what's a use case for low in rocks well there is no use case for high and there is always <laughs> a use case for low. So you're, you're part of the low low club. Then. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. no, you, you, of you're course. comparing okay, yeah, the desert with the rocks, for God's sake. There's a huge difference. Of course. Oh, we shouldn't go to rocks, we should finish so talking about low, sand. So low gear you can use in rocks and sand. Yes. And high gear you can use in... Rocks and sand? Sand. Mostly sand. Yeah. So low gear. Like, you want to use it in <coughs> rocks, you can. Well, technically but you can still use the... Uh, Hello, if it's a small rock, you can. No, exactly. Going up, uh, if you're going down, a normal bumpy terrain. It's still a 4x4 four four system. Okay, so it, it helps to give you more uh, yeah. grip or traction or whatever. But I mean, if you're talking about proper crawling where you need to use the system, then yes, low, low. Of course. Ray is crawling. Huh? <laughs> Ray is always crawling. Uh, don't, don't follow me, you won't make it. <laughs> <laughs> so your yeah. front left and your rear left tires are up in the air. Stop Deal with it! <laughs> No, but uh, other than that, it's, it's even on sand. I mean, sand is more convenient to drive it on high gear. I, I would say, I would say, for the average person, yes. Yeah. And you're not. And, and of course not. Superman. And, uh, and so, so that's why I came on to the point that low is more like a manual because, especially, and so I find this especially yeah. on the JKs. I've not driven the others. Waiting for that to come. Up. I've not driven the others so much on the JK. You know, your the first gear with with the stock gearing is shit. Yeah. In high, yeah. it gives you good good torque and then nothing and then it dies yes. and then you get stuck yep. whereas when you go to low mm-hmm. your first gear is way too it's powerful unusable on sand yes so you've got so you've got second gear so you got second gear which is amazing almost unusable and third gear which is amazing which is mm, usable so so when you're in third gear <laughs> and you you feel you know you're doing a long climb and power is dying you have second gear whereas yeah, in high you don't the downshift yeah Temporarily, so, so, otherwise, so with stock gearing, so again, with stock gearing, if you're if you're doing eighty, and you're like you know going really fast, so you're driving or low, and you go and down you, to second gear, and you come you come across the crest, and you, you cross the crest, and you lose your speed, <laughs> and there's another climb. You can't you can't. Over there. <laughs> you can't. Piston one is ever come across. Piston one is in the air. We lost you guys, <laughs> or we lost me. No, no, I'm with you. The, the, the point I was coming to is that if you're if you're, if you're if you're on a, if you're on a drive <laughs> mm. and you you come across an obstacle, you're l- less able to react to it in high than you are in low. On sand, yes. what kind of an obstacle? A dune? Uh, the, the the sand <laughs> the sand is unpredictable. You might have a drop. You're gonna go flying over the drop and smack your. So what will low or, or, or I mean, you need your brakes, not your low. You need your brakes, and then when you kill your momentum. Yeah. In high, you have less ability to in climb. In that case, you need high you performing. No, but when you kill, you'll kill your momentum the moment you do the switch. Yes. So what do you mean by low will help you go up? I mean you're on the switch already. No, you've done a switch and then there's another climb, for example. Okay. Right. So it's like a very long dune with the switch. When you switch, yeah. if you don't, no, obviously you can switch at the right point that you don't lose much <clears> momentum. <throat> But that's what I'm saying. If it's unpredictable, you switch and then there's a ditch. Yeah. So you have to break, go down the ditch, and then fight. carry on. Mm. Then, then you low is better than high. Yes. Yes. To this. Yeah, because yes, of, of course. course, because you have multiplied torque. So yes, exactly. it does. So, so but all my so why I case. drive in low? Why I drive in low is I don't like to drive over eighty. Okay. So then low is a no brainer. The, the only way I agree with you on this is if you're on big tires and you're not really. Yeah. If you're re-geared, driving on low is, is... So I wouldn't say 35s are big, too much. to be honest. I'd say they're probably the most common tire. What do you want? Are you on 33s or 35s? It's still, 35. it, gets, it gets you a sluggish performance. So Agreed. you Agreed. do need a low gear. Agreed. It would be, it would, if, if I had the re-gear done, I would most likely drive high in, in more situations. Mm, Not all, but in more. Yeah. This, is, this is for sure. So that's... And so people I meet that are new, that are asking this question of which should I drive in, most likely they've not re-geared and most likely they went to 35s or 33s for the look. Mm-hmm. So low gear is going to give them something free and unlock performance 
from their car that and then is, is what will happen is that they the, the 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 gear will drop by itself to first gear when they stop and he will not recognize that and no because in he, because in in a jk you you keep it in third even if it drops yeah, to first. He keeps it as you start moving fine. it picks back up to third yeah if he keeps it on drive yes no in manual when you when you shift in manual and it says three on the dash okay. it will be in first gear but as, you, as soon as you start moving it will switch to third if i knew that you're ever gonna say tell me that i would have gathered each and every case where someone texted me is like <laughs> i mistakenly left it on first gear and now all the coolant is on the ground because it overheated <laughs> <laughs> So I wonder why. No way. <laughs> no way. I mean, it does not never stupid. hold up on the first gear if you're putting on. Of course. On on the manual. I mean, on but drive. If yes, it will shift by you, itself. But, but if you press easy. the accelerator, as well. hmm? if you press the accelerator and it goes and doesn't change, you know something's wrong. Take your foot off. Like. Oh, there's people which do not notice that. No, no, they don't know that. No, oh, the then there's you no. Just, there's you just no cure said stupid, the right? new people that are asking me. So those new people will do that. That's that's the people. Yeah, but that's about. common sense. It's common Educational, sense. Educational, remember? Then a common sense for you as someone who knows, or anyone that has at least basic knowledge. But I, someone who's experiencing it for the first time. That's not well, basic knowledge. If they, I'm they taking five hours, they, they don't understand them. that mechanically. Go, as go, as, go as to low and keep it in third. How do I put in third? This is how you put in third. Yeah, and the moment that he stops, it will go to first by itself. No, it will not. It will. It will not. It will. The moment on the JK, it does not. It automatically goes down to one. It shows you on the screen. Do you want to go and test it? On the JK? You want to go? In, you want me to go and show you? And prove it? Yeah. So we take the camera with us? That's what I'm saying. The gear is in first, but it's the computer <coughs> is in third. So as soon as you start moving and you gain 10 kilometers per hour, it will switch to third. You can hear it. You can feel it. I'll have to try that. Let's go, I'll, I'll show you. Maybe in four low, it's record a video in four high. Tag I will record a video. Tag yeah, four high, no. Yeah, four high st- and sticks in the, in the gear here. Four high sticks? Yeah, if let's say you're in third, <coughs> you come to a stationary stop. And it goes to no, it goes, actually, to, it goes, goes first. Yes. It goes back first. Yeah, it goes back, it goes back, back first. first. Yeah. And and then when you do accelerate and the, IP, uh, the RPM is high, it will shift by itself. Yes, if yes. you leave it long yeah, enough. That's what I'm saying. That's on high. So And in low. As long as it's in manual low, it's so when, if it's not in manual, it will just say D. As yeah. soon as you put it in manual, it'll say one, two, three, four. Yeah. I Wait, are you saying it'll upshift the third when yes. you redline? No. As soon as you start moving, as soon as it has enough speed to switch that gear, it will do it. But you also need to tell the driver that as soon as he stops, he shouldn't put it on parking. Because if he goes on park, it goes back. It goes back to drive. drive. No. no. Only if he switches off the car, it goes back to one. It stays I'll, on third? I'll show you. Well, he's the low expert. He only drives low, so... I'll trust his answer. The, ma- the main problem that I found... <coughs> what about JL? Is JL the same? I don't know. Uh, I haven't done a JL in low. So we're, we're talking so. about JK in that case? Yes. Purely. Mostly. I think I think I've not heard any different from JL. Because uh, a lot of people still the same, say the same thing, keep it in third. And <coughs> oh, I wouldn't expect it to be different. Honestly, the, the, the main JL, mistake. I don't think you need to even use low. There's enough gears to stay in the power so, curve. So it becomes a prep. Once you've driven in, in long enough and you have high and low, it becomes a preference. We can take Janine. Yeah, but himself. theoretically, I kind of agree with low. him. On a JL, you wouldn't need the low. Until he drove behind me. <laughs> <laughs> There's use cases. There's use cases. So again, for the way we drive, which is slow, technical, you know, lots of cresting. Not, it's not just switching. It's cresting. We drive on the crest. Yeah. We follow the whole crest. Yeah. This low is better. Hands down. It gives so you the instant you response you yeah, need yeah. when you need it. Yes. Well, that's something new I learned. Yeah. So, is there anything more you'd like to add for rocks? Thank you, Mr. Dan. Because you didn't want to leave Dan. No, I just wanted to stay on sand. So, <laughs> he's so right. rocks is simple. He's the debate. Rocks, yeah. rocks simple. Yeah. Drive low. Drive low. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you, you. At some cases, if you do go for more advanced driving, you'll need <coughs> other things other than just a low gear. I mean, you need a sway disconnect. You'll need. Uh, lockers, you know, that's it. But Toilet it's it's totally different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so it's it's a totally different uh, terrain. It's different mechanism. It's a different way of driving. It's you as the driver, yes, but you have to depend on someone because there is a fact. Unless you have cameras all around, that there are things that you need to see and, and make sure that you're well aware of your environment. So yeah. It's low gear all the way. So low is, so we conclude low is better. On rocks, yes. On sand, no. Well, uh, so basically, I believe the conclusion is in sand for regular, regular 
day to day sad. Or maybe driving. if you want to maintain your sky just use for <laughs> six years you can drive on the <laughs> For normal day to day sand driving, normal dunes. Uh, your regular outings. I've your driven regular off road outings. Uh, you stick to high. Do not listen to them. I've driven with lots of people. Do not listen to them. Stick to high. Who don't regularly drive with me. And they're very good drivers. And when they drive behind me, they get stuck. So. Do not drive behind Skyjackers are better than anything else. <laughs> Do not install Skyjacker like that. So, you, so when the season starts, we'll go. You follow me in the sand and I'll follow you in the rock. Sure, Do you I still have, have the Skyjacker? If I have a car, it's gone. <laughs> and uh, in uh, Wadis, you would always use the uh, flow. I would like to take Mercury on that day. And I'll drive on high the whole time. Marwan, <laughs> FYA. Drive when you want. Broker is on 513. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so basically, the high gear is like four. <laughs> <laughs> You're on 37s that are virtually 40s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. So, all in agreement. Loads better. Agreement or disagreement? No, no, depending no, on no, context. No, 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 no. So, Amir, do you want to do us the honor? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and uh, leave a comment down below.